anatomy of the atom. Looking for patterns in chemical reactivity. Atoms of different elements differ in number of subatomic particles. This difference in atomic structure affects their chemical properties. So we're looking at the uh, arrangement of the periodic table and it's arranged uniquely to show reactivity or uh, increase in reactivity um, between different atoms. Now, few patterns and trends found in the periodic table. The periodic table arranges elements into periods, which are the horizontal rows, and groups, which are the vertical rows. So let's look at the uh, periodic table right here. So if you look up at the top, the numbers found here at the very top of the periodic table, okay, these are the groups. Okay, groups go up and down. Okay, so groups are the vertical row. So if we look at it in terms of groups, well, here is one group. Here is another group. Okay, here is a group. Okay, so these are the groups of the periodic table. Now, in terms of the periods, the periods are these numbers found here. And I'm going to highlight them in red. Okay, those are the groups, and they re represent the horizontal rows. So here is the first so called row, or should we say first period? Okay, the next period consists of these two with these six atoms. The next row, or should we say the third period, consists of these, okay? And then the next, and next, and next, and so on. And these are what we call the different rows, or should we say the different periods of the periodic table. Okay, now we also have something called the aluminum staircase. Okay. The aluminum staircase, and it divides the elements into the metals and the non-metals. Now, there are groups bordering the staircase or the ladder, and they exhibit both or some metallic, some non-metallic properties. And these, are, these ones are called the metalloids. And let's look at uh, that periodic table again. And let's look for the other aluminum ladder. So right here is the aluminum ladder. And, and it starts off at aluminum. That's the element. So at element, atomic number 13, so element number 13 on the periodic table is aluminum. Okay, And that's where the staircase exists. So if you look at this staircase, that separates the metals on this side and the non-metals on these side. Okay, here are the metalloids. They're the ones that lie along the aluminum ladder. Okay. Um, another part of metals, another group of metals that uh, is also going to be very important uh, in this course is this section right here in the middle. And these are what we call the transitional metals. And we're not going to worry about them right now. We are right now going to just look at the first 20 elements. Okay? And notice now the elements go one. So here's one. Here's two right across. Then we're down to three, four five, six, seven, so on and so on. And we're going to be focusing in terms of Bohr and Bohr Rutherford diagrams for the first 20 um, elements on the periodic table. Okay. So let's look at uh, the properties, physical properties of metals and non-metals and metalloids. Well, in terms of metals, um, they are solid at room temperature except for mercury. They have a shiny luster appearance. Uh, they're good conductors of heat and electricity. And they're both malleable and ductile. Malleable meaning you have the ability to bend it. Uh, ductility or ductile meaning that you can stretch it into a wire. 
Okay. Uh, we look at some non-metals. Okay. Some gases uh, are at room temperature. Some are solids. There is one, however, one non-metal that is in a liquid form. Okay. And that is bromine. Uh, they're not very shiny. Uh, they're poor conductors of heat uh, and electricity. They're brittle. They're not very ductile. Okay. So almost complete opposites to metals.